Hello everyone, I am Manisha Joshi and joining me here today is the owner of Angie's Subs, Ed Mallon. Ed, thank you so much for joining me here today. Happy to be here. You are not only famous among the beaches, but you are famous beyond because as soon as I mentioned Angie's Subs, everyone said, oh yeah, I go all the way down to the beach for that. Now, if you don't know this, most people do pranks and jokes on April 1st. This gentleman decided to buy a restaurant. So I'm really intrigued to hear how you got into the hospitality business and decided to buy Angie Subs. Okay, it's kind of a cool story. <laughs> so um, I had been in the hospitality industry probably since I got out of high school and I'd done a lot of different like trade jobs, plumbing, um, uh, a lot of construction trades, uh, concrete work. And I think my dad got me those jobs while I was in high school to kind of teach me yeah. Um, not just those trades, but what it was like to work with your hands and to mm -hmm. sweat and to get dirty. Yeah. And um, so uh, I, I learned from that that I liked working in the air conditioning and I liked working with people. And so I, got, I had bounced around to a lot of different hospitality jobs, mainly bartending, but I'd worked every different aspect of the restaurant industry, washing dishes, um, bussing tables, uh, I've worked in the kitchen a lot. Um, uh, waiting tables, bartending, so all the way up to management, gamut, yeah. the whole thing, yeah. right. Yeah. And I bounced around, as so many people in this industry do, yeah. um, and it paid the bills. It was a good, good paying job, mm -hmm. and I was good at it. I was always a people person um, until uh, 1999, April 1st, like you said, <laughs> when I bought Angie's. And at the time, I had been working at Ragtime, which was a very popular Jacksonville yes. joint. Yes. I'd been there for 10 years. Wow. I was the bar manager at the time. In fact, after I bought Angie's, I did both jobs. I worked there. I think I might have seen you there, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was a fixture for sure. It was a great, I learned a lot from the Mortons that owned ran, okay. owned a ragtime at the time. They taught me a lot about the industry. Okay. And their philosophy is a lot like mine, and I probably yeah. adopted that from them. All about service. Yeah. Big emphasis on service for me. But, uh, but I bought it in 99, um, so I've owned it now almost 23 years. Wow. Yep. That's fantastic. Um, it's been a fantastic business. I've been very blessed to own it. It's kind of a Jacksonville yeah, staple, you is. know. Yeah, it is. It um, is. And I'm, 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 uh, it's been it's been great. I never would have thought I'd own a sandwich shop for, for this long or do anything for this long, but I've been very blessed. Well, coming back to the part about you being a people person, uh -huh. I love how it's practically, if not every day, every week, you're always talking about the customers or you're talking about employees, their birthdays, anniversaries, you know, come meet, you know, so-and-so's fa you know, favorite sandwich. I, I'm going to guess that your employees absolutely love working here. I mean, you instill a very family-oriented environment. <laughs> I can't speak for them, but one of my goals is, well, let me back up a little bit. We make a sandwich. Yeah. It's probably one of the first things anybody learns how to make, right? When you're five years old, yes. you make your own peanut butter and jelly, yes. right? <laughs> um, and the, the ingredients that we use here at Angie's, yeah. salami, ham, cheese, bread, mayonnaise, mustard, lettuce, yeah. tomato, you can go right down to Publix and buy the same stuff. True. We aren't doing anything that's secret, really. Yeah. Um, so what I did was take the same aspect that I loved about the restaurant industry. Okay. Like when I was a bartender, a yeah. rum and coke is a rum and coke. Right. Like a jack on the rocks is a jack on the rocks. Mm -hmm. But if you serve it with personality, yeah. with charisma, um, with attitude, <laughs> now you set yourself apart. Exactly. So that's all I did with Angie's. Yeah. Subway, Larry's Giant, Quiznos, they all make the same sandwiches I do. But I teach my staff that what we're going to emphasize mm -hmm. is service. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to know our customers. Yeah. When you come to Angie's Subs, yeah. your name is on your sub. <laughs> when you sit in this dining room yeah. where we're sitting, they come out and they say, John, and John <laughs> raises his hand. And that's how we that's get to great. know our customers, right? Yeah. So um, we add a little bit of, we add personality and service to a sandwich shop. Yeah. That's just really been my philosophy. It's what I, te it's what I teach and it's what I preach. So I teach my employees about attitude the most important thing they will bring mm -hmm. to every job for the rest of their lives and I don't care what they're doing it's yeah. not just the service industry but every job it's not the degree that they bought at a college yep. it's not the car they drive it's not how pretty they are mm -hmm. uh, it's not their last name yeah it's their attitude Absolutely. it's the most important thing they bring to work and so I, I preach that at all employee meetings and I get my managers to preach that when they're hiring what we hire is attitudes. And it's a lasting experience, right? I mean, not only do you get five stars on Google, but beyond, above and beyond that, I'm going to tell 15 people what a great experience I had when I eat somewhere, mm -hmm. where not only is the food good, but it's like, gosh, everybody said hello, I was greeted, I was thanked. I felt like you wanted me to come back. Bingo. I think that it just If you read Yelp and Google yeah. reviews about yeah. my restaurant. I did. <laughs>
The food's very good. Yeah. The staff is incredible. Yeah. That warms my heart. I'm That's getting awesome. goosebumps when I say that. And I talk to them. I repost those to, on our group texts yeah. to the staff. That's great. Um, and if a name gets mentioned, like um, Justin got mentioned yeah. two weeks ago, yes, right? Yes. $50 bonus. Wow. So Justin went and got a t-shirt made that has his name on it. No way. And he wears it when he runs food oh, now. So <laughs> that's pretty smart. <laughs> that's great. Very smart kid, right? So. And speaking of which, when you said you call out the customer, I remember reading, it was about two years ago, that you had an allergy situation come up with customers. And yeah. I was blown away by the way you handled it. Do you mind sharing with everyone that story? Not at all. So this was at my other restaurant, which okay. I sold a few months ago, Angie's okay. Grom. And uh, it's a staffed by younger people, just like Angie's is, yeah. right? So I wasn't there. Um, there was a mix-up in two entrees that were very similar. Okay. One that has shrimp yeah. and one that doesn't. Um, they look exactly the same on the outside, right? Yeah. So when the employee brought the two entrees to the table, yeah. and the, the names were the same. So they, they hollered out. I remember it was Barry. It was two different Barry, berries. bingo. Yes. It was yeah. Barry. You're right. Yeah. Good memory. They said Barry. Well, a Barry raised his hand. The entrees were very similar. They placed them in front of Barry and his wife. And the wife started to eat it and realized she had just eaten a shrimp. Well, she has a selfish allergy. Oh, yeah. So she gets very nervous very yeah. quick um, and realizes she may have some anaphylactic reaction. Uh, and my staff was very cool about it. They didn't, uh, they didn't freak out. Yeah. And uh, one of them volunteered to go to the uh, drugstore, get a pen, because an yeah. epi pen, because she didn't have one, and yeah. we didn't have one on hand, which we do now. That's great. Um, and they sat with her and were ready to call 911 if they needed to, and, and kind of just stayed with her and, and um, got her the right entree, got the other people the right entree. Oh, that's and great. for 19-year-olds, they handled it very well. That's fantastic. Right. Um, it made me very proud. Yeah, and, and uh, I think one of them had only been there, what, two weeks, I think correct. I read. And yeah. I mean, but that's the kind of culture I think you instill. For somebody that that's new, so new to the job, they right away knew how to handle it, what the protocol was, what the culture was of your restaurant. Yep. Because a lot of times you can be new and be like, I'm new here, you know, what do I know? What do I need to do? But instead, they knew the culture that you instilled, they knew how to handle it. And I just, reading that story really warmed my heart. Because yeah. you could react in so many different ways. You I also could. like how they had Benadryl on hand too. So. That's right. They offered a yeah. Benadryl. Bingo, yeah. you're right. That was very smart. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. They handled it perfectly. That's great. Yeah. So, could have been a major crisis <laughs> and it was averted because of their attitude, really. Because so of the way they So what's your favorite it. sub? Wow, that's a great question. So um, there is a sub on the menu called the El Guapo. Oh, wow. We named it after Jeff Lagerman. Okay. Not really. I always tease him <laughs> about that. So I was a very good customer of Angie's. I think I ate here three days a week. Oh, yeah. Hang on. So for oh. those of you watching, mathematicians that are watching, according to him, you ate for seven years, three times a week. That's over hundreds of subs. Yeah. I was I was Angie's best customer before I wow. bought the place for seven years. Oh, my gosh. So I used to run fishing charters during the day. I was bartending at ragtime at night, okay. and I ran fishing charters during the day. And somehow you slept in between. I, I didn't sleep much back then. <laughs> when you're 20, you don't sleep much, right? And so the uh, marina, where I put my boat in, right down okay. here at Beach Marine. Mm -hmm. So I would meet the people that I would take fishing down there, and I would stop at Angie's and get subs, lunches, for my customers that I was taking wow. fishing. So that's how I got to know the lady named Carol, who everybody called Angie's, who owned Angie's. Okay. And I fell in love mainly with the sweet tea. Because I was a big sweet tea Which freak. Which I'm going to try today. You know, I haven't had your sweet tea. It's the best in the country. Okay. Very proud of my sweet tea. <laughs> we sell a ton of it. Awesome. Anyway, so I would stop here and get my sandwiches. And I, my, the name of my boat was El Guapo. <laughs> um, and so they named... Was I, that a reference to you? Because I know it means nah, handsome. It means handsome. Well, I got it from the Three Amigos. The movie, the Steve Martin <laughs> yes. movie, right? Um, and my boat was a good-looking boat. So <laughs> anyway, I'd pull up and El Guapo was painted on the side of my boat. And they named a sub... I used to eat the veggie tuna here, Okay. but then they kind of modified it for me, and then they called it the El Guapo. <laughs> so the El Guapo is still on the menu, and it's probably, if I was going to get put in the electric chair tonight and I had to eat one sub before that, I'd probably get an El Guapo, <laughs> although the Peruvian is by far our number one seller. Well, wouldn't you know that someone that's very close to me, their daughter, came all the way from North Carolina. We asked, where would you like to eat, and she said, first stop. The Peruvian Angie yeah. subs, yeah. It's funny how often we hear that. So I've owned Angie's now for almost 23 years, but it's been here for almost 40. Wow. So we have generations of people yeah. eating at Angie's. And they move, of course, all yeah. over the country. And the, I hear this at least once a week, okay? Um, 
I landed in Jacksonville, and the first, first place, place I was going, or the first place my kid wanted to go, was Andy Suds to get a Peruvian. That's got to melt your heart. It's the best. I mean, it's the best thing to hear. I love it. So walking around your restaurant, I noticed you've got memorabilia, you've got shoes, helmets hanging over your head. Do customers here? love to come in and go hey man love your subs yep. this gift is for you yep. so i'm looking at football helmets and yep. everything around here so yep. you've got a gamut of athletes moms dads like you said generations of family coming in what what is the most amazing gift i'd say that you've been given that just blew you away as a customer appreciate wow. you do um that is an excellent question <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here but i think i know what it is so what you just said it happens so it's yeah. not rare for me to pull up and there's a table and chair sitting on the front out front wow. so somebody's moved yeah. they eat at angie's they yeah. know that i use uh, mixed mass furniture yeah. and they leave their dining room and chairs because they can't take it and now it's in this dining room somewhere That's right amazing. and then when they come back in town they eat at their di their dining room oh, table wow. in angie's right That's really cool. Well, we had a customer um a fisherman mm -hmm. And I could say this about a few different things that hang in here, actually. And he passed away, and he told his wife that he wanted his fishing mounts um, there in that other room okay. to hang in Angie's after he passed. And so wow. his wife brought those mounts in. And the same thing has happened with some uh, uh, with some deer heads. This yeah. one happens to be one of mine, but there's some mounted animal heads in here that um, customers who've passed away, yeah. um, they wanted their those heads to hang in Angie's yeah. so when people leave us stuff like that it really means a yeah. lot uh, Jeff Logman a buddy of mine ex Jaguar right yeah. uh, he just downsized his house and he's a big hunter he and I yes. we share that um, and he just left he gave me a ton of stuff there's a lot of his stuff in, in both of the restaurants well, it was about but four deer heads that greeted me when I came in <laughs> some of those are Jeff's um, some of those are uh, employees yeah there's a young lady who uh, used to work for me um, and she was an avid white-tailed deer yeah. hunter and she some of her mounts are in here uh, uh, like a lot of those bottles that, that decorate the walls were um, a collection of my grandfather's oh wow he collected old bottles and so, so when you come in every morning i mean there's yeah. not only customer history there's family history that you've instilled in here so fishing mm -hmm. hunting running the restaurant tell me about your family life wow so i'm born and raised right here in jacksonville palm okay. valley to be exact um went to pvpv -PV from kindergarten through ninth grade, wow. went to Allen D. Nice when it was first built in St. Okay. John's County. First graduating class there in 1984. I was accepted into the first freshman class at UNF in the fall of 1984. <laughs> but I was born and raised right here at the beach. Yeah. I've been a beach boy my whole life. Um, I missed Fletcher by one year, so I ran around with a lot of Fletcher people at the beach. Um, obviously, Fletcher's, um, uh, the, yeah, I'm very close to the high school yeah. um, and the middle school. Um, and so I, 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 I do a lot of business with them. I, I work with the Fletcher. Uh, teachers and students a lot along with UNF FCCJ but born and raised right here at the beach moved away a few times but kept coming back and yeah. um, when you move away you realize how special yes. not just Jacksonville is but yeah. this beach community is it's Absolutely. a it's a small town in a big big city yeah is, is really what it is and you are famous speaking of small town in a big city for your signage yep. and I love that people say they know they've arrived at the beach when they see the Angie sub sign. So tell me the history about that. Okay, so when I bought Angie's, mm -hmm. April 1st, 90, 1999, it was just 19 feet wide. It was a little takeout place. Okay. No dining inside. It had a little red table you could sit and wait and a couple of bar stools. Okay. Um, it was all takeout. And there was a dry cleaner, a laundromat, and a, a convenience store, a Little Champ food store that we're sitting in right now. Okay. So when I bought Angie's, two years later, the Little Champ closed up. Ah. Uh, so I book, cut two holes in the wall and made that my dining room. And the big sign outside, the, now yeah. the marquee, used to say Little Champ Food Store. <laughs> so I just changed the face on it and made it a marquee so that we could catch people's attention as they drove down Beach Boulevard. Yeah. And you could, I could use it um, not just to advertise my business, but kind of a community service. Yeah. So you'll see when Joe Smith retires yes. or... Um, Somebody's or birthday. Nancy Smith yeah. has a new baby, yeah. or so and so passed away, or, or you know, we use it uh, for, for Fletcher football games, yeah. or Nice football <laughs> games, or or whatever's going yeah. on in the community. We use it as a, a community billboard as much as I do as I use it to advertise my business. And I've also noticed you do a lot of political um, campaign and support signs. And I did not know, which I discovered today, that you've had your hand in politics as well. 
I did. I ran for Congress, yeah. U.S. House, District wow. 4, Florida, uh, in 2016, when the seat became um, available when Andrew Crenshaw retired. Um, it was a unique thing. I'd never run for public office, yeah. office before, but I was always interested, mainly in local politics. Yeah. But um, it was a time when uh, Donald Trump was running, yeah. and there was a lot of talk about politics, of course, yes. with his name in the mix. Yes. And that seat came open, and I was a local boy, and I said, you know, what the heck? Yeah. Why don't I just try this? Yeah. And I'm kind of apt to do things like that. Uh, Unfortunately, they're mostly expensive things. And running for Congress is very expensive. Yeah. Um, it was a very expensive but educational uh, experience. And I'm glad I did it. I only garnered 10% of the vote, and uh, uh, our local sheriff ended experience. up winning that yeah. seat. He still holds that seat, John Rutherford. Yeah. Fantastic guy. I got yeah. to know John Rutherford, and I met a lot of very um, unique uh, and interesting people running for Congress. It was, a, it was great. a great thing that I did. But locally, I do allow all anyone who's running for office, yeah. I don't care what their persuasion is, mm -hmm. um, to utilize Angie's for meet and greets. Because okay. it's a great place to meet yeah. local beach voters. It is. You know, so they, they uh, and I love to meet them. And yeah. it's, I think I think our customers like that too. Yeah. Because where do you get to go and really ask them questions and yeah. sit down with them, right? So yeah. I, I offer that. Um, it's kind of a little community service. When you're running for office, you can put your sign out there, I'll put your name on the billboard, come in and meet our customers. That's great. So speaking of community, again, I always wonder when you sleep, but you have decided to give back to the community in something that was very, very personal to you, that touched the family. And I would love for the audience to hear your story of how, how this came to be. Okay, so uh, 11 years ago, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and my wife and I have been very fortunate. We have very, we are very successful, hardworking people. Yeah. Um, we've always been able to pay our bills. At the same time, my wife was battling breast cancer. My father was diagnosed with melanoma. Wow. My mother was diagnosed with oh lymphoma. So that we, we were spent a lot of time yeah. in oncology centers, radiation centers, chemo th centers. Um, we met a lot of cancer patients. Yeah. And uh, we met a lot of people who were less fortunate than we are. Mm -hmm. And we vowed at that time. If we ever had the wherewithal and the yeah, time yeah. and the money, we would create a foundation that would help cancer patients pay their bills. Wow. Because paying your bills, especially with cancer, yeah. the number one cause of bankruptcy in America is healthcare mm -hmm. bills. And cancer is very expensive. Chemotherapy is outrageously expensive. And if you don't have insurance, yeah. it, it, it's, you can't afford it. No. You simply can't afford yeah. it. Uh, not uncommon for someone to have a half a million dollar chemotherapy oh, bill. Gosh. It's very, very expensive. So. We vowed that we would create a foundation. Me being in the hospitality industry, and yeah. I always wanted to have my own brand. <laughs> and uh, going back to my bartender's days, yeah. I was always intrigued at what brand sold the most. Okay. So I created a vodka brand. Love it. It's called Two Tit Mice Vodka. It's a okay. sweet potato vodka distilled in California, my Atwater, home state. California. Your home state, yeah. <laughs> right below Napa Valley, right in the Central Valley. Okay. Um, our sweet potato fields are right around our distillery. We grow That's our great. own sweet potatoes and turn them into sweet potato wow. vodka. And two dollars from the sale of every bottle okay. goes to our breast cancer foundation. One hundred percent of that money goes wow. to our patients. So okay. we find needy patients. We work with Mayo, we work with Baptist, we're now working with GVMC, which is Greater Baltimore mm -hmm. Maryland Clinic, okay. another clinic up in Baltimore that we're working with. Um, so, uh, and, our, and our product is sold nationwide now in every total wine in the country. Wow. So we're moving some vodka. So we're generating some money and we broke the $100,000 barrier in funds raised last year. Congratulations. So yeah, we're about to hit 50 patients that we've helped with wow. their rent, their water bill, their electric bill, their mortgage, their car payment, their cell phone bill, whatever bill piles up yeah. on the kitchen table that you can't pay while you're trying to, while you're fighting yeah. for your life, yeah. we pay that bill. Because it's something all, I also talk about at employee meetings. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really call it the, the, the bite off more than you can chew yeah. theory, right? Yeah. So my, I was raised and my dad said this a thousand times, don't bite off more than you can chew, son, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's an old saying and it yeah. means don't, don't take on more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. Well, I hate that. Yeah. Always, I teach these kids, you're graduating from high school, here's what I want you to do. Associate with the right people, yeah. positive people, and always yeah. bite off more than you can yeah. chew. Because you can always spit it out. Yeah. But you don't know your limits until you push them. Exactly. You've got to push your limits. Exactly. If you want to grow, if you want to excel, yeah. if you want to be a success, no matter how you define yeah. it, bite off more than you can chew. Yep. That's how you test yourself, and that's how you learn 
your greatest abilities. Yeah. When you when you realize I can't tackle this problem or I've yeah. taken on too much, that's not a failure. No. Life is a ladder yeah. with a lot of rungs on it. Yep. And every one of those is a learning process. Yeah. You want to get to the top of that ladder? Yeah. There's going to be some what we call defeats or what other people call failures. Yeah. They're not. They're experiences. Yeah. And you learn from every one of them. And you can't be afraid mm -hmm. to fail. It's not a failure. No. It's only a failure if you quit. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget Carol. She, lady I bought it from, yeah. teaching me um, how to make the sandwiches the Angie's way. And, and uh, she told me at, at the time when I bought it, on a good day, on a Friday, which is a busy day, we did yeah. 40 sandwiches. Wow. 40. We sold 40 sandwiches all day long, <laughs> right? And I said, I'm getting to 100 before you're done teaching me. She was going to work for me for six months, right? I said, I'm getting to 100 sandwiches. That's mighty ambitious. But we did it. We got to 100 sandwiches. I'll never forget wow. 100 sandwiches. And I had a little oven back then about this big, <laughs> two shelves. And we did 100 sandwiches. And I had two employees. And we were high-fiving. And it was fantastic. Now we can do a thousand sandwiches on a Saturday. That's great. No problem. And you cater as well now. I we do cater. We don't cater as much. Okay. Oh, it's been a, it's been fun to grow. Uh, it's been fun to grow with Jacksonville, and I've been again. I say it all the time, but I've been blessed to own such a great business with such great employees and great customers. Well, I was just even reading the door that's next to the restroom, and I love all the notes. Even mentioning that, yeah, what was it? Um, Ed is sexy. <laughs> Made me laugh. But I mean, it's just all these employee and customer comments, and everywhere I look, you have employee appreciation everywhere. Whether it's a birthday, best employee of the week, the month. I think that culture just says so much not about who you are, but the workplace itself. I mean, somebody on the outside looking in would go, I want to work at Angie's Subs. They look like they're having fun and they look like they're really appreciated. Well, what you say, you just hit it. It's, um, it's true. So I've been blessed at the beaches to be able to pull some of the best employees yeah. over the years from Fletcher High School. I mean, I got high school kids, yeah. lots of high school kids yeah. working. It's their first job, and they say that. They're parents. Because of our culture, I want you to work at Angie Subs. That's and one of the notes I saw. Sorry to interrupt, but it said, thank you for instilling great values in my son. I just read that. Bam, right. So um, I've been blessed to be able to pull the best local talent yeah. to work here. Um, but it's because of our culture, and it's because of these attitudes that I was talking about earlier. We yeah. have great attitudes, and you want your kids to work in a place where the, everybody else is smiling, right? Yeah. And, but Angie's, we just, again, we slap meat and, yeah. and lettuce on bread and make a sandwich, <laughs> right? We bake it in an oven. Yeah. But it's, it's the people that work here that are the lifeblood of my business. I'm successful yeah. because of my staff. They are my family. I don't have any kids. <laughs> They're my kids. Yeah. And believe me, they call me when they get pulled over yeah. and they need money to get out of jail. <laughs> Um, it's happened many times, but no, right, they're, they're, they're my kids. They have on my speed dial in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they are the reason for Angie's success yeah. and my success. Um, and I hope that in turn, I'm helping make them successful. That's fantastic. All right, so another thing you're famous for, so many things, is your big gigantic smile, which I think you need to <laughs> trademark. So if you can share with everyone where you're located, for those who haven't discovered you yet, uh, I would love for you to tell them where Angie Subs is. Okay, so Angie's has been about in the same location right here on Beach Boulevard, 1436 Beach Boulevard, almost at the intersection of Beach and Penman, a quarter mile closer to the ocean than Adventure Landing. Adventure Landing is kind of a landmark. or just east of Taco Lou. Everybody knows where that is. We've been here for 40 years. Uh, we have the big sign out front. We're at the intersection of Penman and Beach. Uh, really hard to miss the big blue awning outside and all the cars in the parking lot. Uh, we have an acre and a half, and it's usually filled with cars. Been in the same location, and we're going to be here for another 40 years Fantastic. if it's up to me. So you're treating me to the famous iced tea in a Peruvian, right? Best so. sweet tea in the country. <laughs> All that you want comes in a big 32-ounce cup I and a Peruvian. It. It's on me today. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I hope you learned a lot about Ed Malin, and I hope that your next stop is Angie's Subs. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, everyone.